All right, Mr. Claxton's Algebra 2 CP class. Didn't like the way class ended today. Would like to just review what linear programming is. You have this in your notes. The goal of this video is to take you through a linear programming application problem. We need to understand what linear programming is, what a constraint is, and what a feasible region is. We're going to spend most of right now pulling those constraints out of the word problem that you were given today. So let's go ahead, zoom out a little bit, scroll down to the problem that you were given. Okay, this is the problem that you were given. I've copied and pasted it into the Mimeo Studio. Uh, I did add, you know, this piece right here, let x equal and let y equal. That is extremely important when completing word problems. We have to be able to identify um, what the variables are, and we do that based upon what the question is asking. So let's very quickly go to that Mimeo Studio problem, where everything is color-coded. Yes, I will not get slipped up on this. Uh, this is a way to organize your thoughts, and if some of you need to use this, please do. Please use this um, tactic, this strategy, to solve word problems. There's a lot happening inside these word problems. It's really nice to organize it. Some of you might like to organize, too. So you can certainly pause and read the problem. We're going to, to get going with, with what we need to do. So the purple identifies what we need to know. Find the number of each type of guitar. Well, what types of guitars do we have here? We have acoustic guitars and electric guitars. So we're going to e let X equal the number of acoustic guitars and let Y equal the number of electric guitars. That's based on what we need to know. Then we need to, well, we've identified the variables already, we need to recall the constraints, okay, and then we graph example two. So the constraints, and then we need to graph it. So looking at the information, the given information, this was the given information. I outlined that and color-coded it. We have the acoustic guitar requires two work hours in factory A, red, right up there, and it requires um, in factory A, the electric guitar requires four work hours. So this is both factory A. Factory A is red. Factory B is, well, coincidentally, blue. So that's how we're going to form our constraints there. Factory A and factory B. We know that both factories can operate for at most 10 hours each day. That's the most they can operate. At most, well, at most means less than or equal to. Think, if you have at most $50 in your wallet, what's the most that someone could have in their wallet? $50. So the 2x comes from the top given, two work hours in factory A. The 4y comes from the next red segment here, electric the electric guitar requiring four work hours in factory A. Y deals with electric guitars. X deals with acoustic guitars. You multiply the number created by the number of work hours needed to create one, and that's going to give you how many hours need to be spent on that. The blue equation represents factory B. Now, let's go ahead and break these down. Now that we have, we have two of the major constraints here, and then you should tell yourself, self, can there be any negative hours in this? And the answer to that is no. So looking at the breakdown here of the two constraints that, that we've come up with so far, uh, we have two other constraints down here because there cannot be negative amount of hours worked. When we break those down, we get two different linear inequalities, both of which are less than or equal to, so they're going to be solid. In order to graph these, we need to interpret the y-intercept. So the y-intercept of factory in factory A there is 10 fourths. Now I wrote it as 10 fourths because some of you don't, you know, maybe you don't want to use the mental um, power. You don't want to use that mental power up. There's a lot happening here um, with, with converting that fraction. And you don't have to convert that fraction, right? You know, you can take that straight to a decimal of two and a half. 
You know, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. So that would be our y-intercept. And I need another point in order to graph this line. Now there's a couple different options I have. I can follow the slope, which is tougher here, but possible. And I could go down 1, right 2. So if I go down 1, I go down to 1.5. And, and then I go right 2. Right 2 is right 2 units. Okay? It is not right 2 blocks. So right 1, right 2, and I know that the next red point will be right here. Now that's not going to give me um, the most accurate graph. I mean, I could go down 1 and right 2 again. And that's only going to get me to 4. And then I know going down 1, right 2, I could go down a half. If I go down a half, I go right 1. Uh, or I could have calculated the x-intercept by plugging a 0 back in for y here. So I could have calculated the x-intercept by plugging a 0 back in for y in the red equation. All right, graphing that line, in graphing that line, that solid line, I know that I'm going to shade below that line. I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow for now. Instead of shading, just draw an arrow. I'm shading below. Now we have factory B solving for Y yields Y is less than or equal to negative 4 thirds X plus 10 thirds. You might just keep it 10 thirds. Typically I do want you to go ahead and convert it to a decimal because they're easier to graph. Now as you can see here my scale you know, I go every fourth, every fourth block is one. So that means this is really scaled in fourths, okay, fourths. So going up three and one-third, well, it's, I know it's a little bit more than 3.25. You know, that's not an exact point, and I know that. So I might want to get an exact point for my x-intercept. In order to do that, consider the equation for x plus 3y, or 3 times 0, equals 10. I plug a 0 in for y, because any value on this axis has a y value of, you said it, 0. When I plug a 0 in for y, I solve the equation for x equals 10. x equals 10 fourths, same as 5 halves, so my y-intercept is 2 and a half. I'm looking to graph the blue line, And I do have to consider that I am only shading above, above the x-axis. Above the x-axis is y is greater than or equal to 0. y is greater than or equal to 0, it means above the x-axis. Tough for some to remember. Kind of counter to what you think. And then x is greater than or equal to 0 is right of the y-axis. You know you're shading below both lines. So all of those lines or all of those points, they come to a common intersection right there at the this uh, greenly shaded area. So this right here is our feasible region. There's just one other piece now that we need to figure out. We need to figure out the vertices. So the vertices for this particular feasible region, um, most of which are marked very clearly. We have vertices, and I'm going to go ahead and use purple for this. This is going to help me figure out what that question is asking, right? So my vertices marked in purple. And if I do a really good job on my graph, then it makes it makes solving you know, it makes marking my, seeing my vertices uh, a lot better. And I just want to use the vertices that are touching that green shaded area. We know these two vertices, we know three of them already. Three of the vertices that, that we need three of the vertices that we need, we know one is this y-intercept. That was the y-intercept for the red. The y-intercept for the red was 0, 2.5. You might want to keep it as a fraction if you like working for fractions, or working with fractions. We see the origin down here. Obviously, the origin would be the minimum. 
and this x-intercept for the blue equation, the x-intercept for the blue equation, conveniently enough, I found that already, that is 2 and a half, 0, almost wrote 0, 2 and a half, 2.5, comma, 0. And then I have one more to figure out. And we've discussed different ways that, that we can figure this out in class. Um, you could use substitution, you could use elimination, now, we've graphed our lines, and if we're very confident in how we graphed our lines, then we can, we can estimate, we can plug and chug, right? Um, also known as guess and check. So right here, you know that this point, you know the x value is 1. And I'm not making it purple yet because I, 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 don't, I don't have the y value. So what would the y value need to be? Well, I could choose either one of these lines. If the x value were 1, and I would say 2 times 1 and plus 4 times y. And I'm going to consider this an equation equals equals 10. So 2 times 1, subtract 2 from each side. And you're going to get 4y equals 8. And you know that y would equal 2. Now, you might say, Mr. Claxton, why didn't you just look to the left to see that that was the point 1, 2? Well, I could have done that, and I could have just plugged it back in, but I still would have had to plug it back into. would have had to plug 1, 2 back in. Does 1, 2 work there? Obviously, it does. I just solved for 2. If I plug 1 in plus 4 times 2, I know I'm going to get 10. I'm considering those equations now. And then I want to consider the blue equation. If I plug 4 times 1, it's 4, plus 3 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, that is equal to 10. So I know that that is my point of intersection. So now I can write it in purple. So this is another vertice. 1, 2 is another vertice. Now that I have all my vertices, I can go back and identify what my objective function is. The objective function is in orange, big coincidence there objective and orange um, and it tells me that acoustic guitar yields a profit of thirty dollars electric guitar yields a profit of fifty dollars so if I'm attempting to write an objective function for this I know that my profit is going to be equal to we'll just we'll go back right back to here so, so we can see the problem and we'll write it in orange I know, and this is my objective function for the next step, that P is going to be equal to 30. What am I multiplying 30 by? Well, my acoustic guitars were X, so 30X plus 50Y. This is my objective function that I need to plug all of those vertices into in order to determine the maximum. And I hope this helps to clear up um, all the confusion that was happening at the end of class today. I know it, it ended so abruptly, and I was standing there dumbfounded, um, too close to the board. Thank you very much for listening. Come to class tomorrow, prepared and ready to learn.